Now who would buy this? Is a 2-in-1 laptop really worth the price tag and some of the questionable design choices? Nothing beats that feeling of writing or sketching on a piece of paper. But sketching is not just a scribble, it's actually a powerful tool that aids with design generation, solving problems, as well as communicating complex ideas quickly and simply. So when there's a laptop that can, first of all, get turned into a tablet which I can sketch on, and second of all, use it as a powerful laptop for all of my design work and video editing. And it's also surprisingly quite lightweight. You know I had to buy it. And I have the Microsoft Surface Book 2. After using this laptop consistently for two years now, for literally everything, I believe that I can give you an informed review on whether you should invest in a two-in-one laptop or maybe you should just save your coins. Having a graphic tablet while studying online has proven to be so beneficial because when I'm having reviews and crits with my lecturers, they also had a graphic tablet. So we would both sketch over the design and it kind of made it feel like we're in the same class, even though we're not. And it saves so much time from just, you know, going back and forth of, no, I meant this door, no, no, the, w the door to your left, no, my left, no, your right. You know, it saves you from that hassle. And you know, having a graphic tablet is the best when you want to watch movies or play games with your friends or maybe just by yourself because who has friends after 2020? But I also wanted a laptop that I can play bigger games like Counter-Strike and Top Raider. So what do you do? Well, a two-in-one laptop is the best choice for my needs. But does it match your needs and is it still worth the price tag? I probably hyped up two-in-one laptops for you guys and didn't speak about the disadvantages because there still are. I'd say the number one disadvantage of two-in-one laptop is that some of the inexpensive models don't have a lot of processing power or battery life or sometimes both. And even expensive models might not have good processors or good battery life because there is less space for fans to cool off the processors or maybe there are fans but just require a lot of power. And then the ones that are the best performing two-in-one laptops are usually very expensive and can cost around thousands. Another disadvantage, I wouldn't say a disadvantage, but it's just a consideration that two-in-one laptops or tablets in general, they don't replace traditional sketching. When you sketch on a tablet, there is this time period where you kind of have to get used to it. It's not more difficult and it's not easier or anything. It's just a little bit different. And the last downside is that some of them have really small hard drives. There are solutions and workarounds to all of these disadvantages. You just have to be aware of them when you are buying a two-in-one laptop. Now, before I share my full review of the two-in-one laptop that I have, I want to say that it is an older laptop and it's no longer on the Microsoft website which makes me sad. Point of this video is not to recommend this specific laptop, more on recommending two-in-one laptops and the Surface Book or the Microsoft Books in general, because I think they are built well, they're great quality, they give off decent performance, and basically all of my family has Surface. And all in all, they're just great laptops. And you can use my specs as guidelines, so if you get a laptop that's even better than mine, you know that you won't have any problems in your architectural studies. So now, let's talk about this laptop for a sec. The CPU is built in the screen, and when you detach it, it's a fully functional tablet on its own. And the GPU is built in the keyboard. And when you connect them together, you have a fully fledged, fully functional, graphically powered laptop. Now this laptop, depending on the version that you get, is quite expensive and a lot of people, especially students, might not be able to afford it. But there is a cheaper version with no graphic card, which you should not even bother at all with. Now the hinge where you detach the tablet is fully functional and very well made, even after two years of using it. But I feel like the hinge might not be for everyone because there are laptops where you can actually fold them and I feel like that is a nicer approach for two-in-one laptop in my opinion but they might not be as graphically powerful as this laptop. The build quality of this laptop is spectacular. It's a magnesium body, it's soft, it feels well made and everywhere you touch it just feels durable. 
The screen is 3 by 2 ratio. It's high resolution with great color output. And that is really important when you're in architectural school because you want to see the colors vividly. The keyboard and the trackpad are excellent. They feel soft and comfortable. And as you click on the trackpad, it feels a little bit more deliberate because it is slightly loud, but nothing too annoying. As for performance with the graphic card, with the processor, with the 16 gigabyte RAM, this device is powerful enough to let me edit, create designs, use SketchUp, use V-Ray, and also versatile enough to let me use it as a tablet to sketch. But I am thinking of upgrading to the Microsoft Surface Book 3 because it does have a better graphics card and a better processor. And according to a number of websites that compared two-in-one laptops, the Microsoft Surface Book 3 is the best premium 2-in-1 laptop and there are generally not many 2-in-1 laptops with the same performance as the Microsoft Surface Books on the market. Now as for gaming performance, I think this laptop is well equipped for games even though it's not specifically designed for gaming, if that's something that you're interested in. This version has the GTX 1050, I think the 15 inch has the GTX 1060, and it gives off a decent performance in most of the games that I play. In some of the newer games, I do have to reduce the resolution to 1080p, but games are still very playable. So I think that this laptop is best suited for light or moderate demanding games. However, if you are looking for a gaming laptop, there are definitely way better laptops out there that are specifically designed for gaming for a price that's less than this laptop. Now let's talk about battery life. This laptop will get you 10 hours of use when you use it as a laptop and 3 hours when you use it as a tablet, which I think is great battery life overall. The tablet is originally 18 watt hours and after 2 years of consistent use, it has dropped down to 14.2 and the base of this laptop is originally 57 watt hours and after two years it has dropped down to 47 and a half. I use this laptop a lot. So after two years of use, I'm at 82% capacity of life. Battery capacity life. The battery, the life of the bat. Now there are some things that I dislike about this laptop. First of all is the price. I think it's a little bit pricier than what it should be, making it quite an unrealistic laptop for most architectural students and just users in general. The second thing that I dislike about this laptop is the ports. So I only have two USB ports, a memory card port, charging port, and another port here that I honestly don't know what it's used for. I haven't been able to find a case that I like, and that's just because it is an older laptop. Overall, I think this is a great laptop if you're an architectural student. And there's literally nothing stopping me from recommending this laptop to you. But you need to make sure that you're using this laptop to its full potential. So if you are buying this laptop and not using the tablet, well, you can probably find cheaper laptops with the same specs. But if you are using this laptop and tablet feature, you're gonna love it. Let's talk about some of the accessories that you can use with this laptop. So this is the Microsoft Surface Pen, which costs another £100. It's £100 for a pen. And to be honest, I didn't buy this pen as soon as I bought the laptop because my bank account was screaming. Now this is the Microsoft Surface Original Pen, but I think there's other options on Amazon. I've never tried them myself, but apparently they, they do work and they have great reviews. And I also use these wireless noise cancelling. Anyways, these are really great headphones. They're by Goji. I also have the Microsoft Surface Dock, which has so many different ports that I can use either for, for a monitor and it can also charge your laptop. And the last accessory that I have is the Toolbox controller, which is an illustration or photo or video editing controller. It kind of looks like a video game controller, which really appeals to me. And it has quite a substantial weight and it just feels really built well and high quality. For full transparency, this was gifted, but I'm not sponsored. And either way, I will always share my honest opinion. 
So essentially this would replace your keyboard when you are using a tablet and that way you don't have to find the buttons on your keyboard to make the shortcut. So having a controller like this when you're using a tablet makes your experience a lot more enjoyable. This is fully customizable for a range of softwares including Premiere Pro and Photoshop and there's also other softwares that are listed on their website. It has good weight, good size, as you can see it just about fits the palm of my hand. There are also rubber feet at the bottom of this controller to allow it to grip to your desk or your table. And it also comes with a USB cord so you can plug it into your laptop and download the software and you are ready to use it. There's also presets on their website that you can download for different software, but again, you can customize it to however you like it. Editing quickly and efficiently for us designers is really important so I was really excited to first try out this controller even though I've had this controller for about a month now I wouldn't say that I'm extremely accustomed to it it will still require a bit of practice and because I'm not rendering or using anything because I'm in my own rig woohoo so now let's put it to the test by using Photoshop so this is the website where you can download the software so once you open it, it should look like this. You've got the auto switch here, which when you first download it, it'll be turned off. But what this does is that the presets will switch automatically based on the application. These presets were already downloaded when I installed the software, which is pretty cool. Now, if you look at the Photoshop presets, these are all of the shortcuts or the buttons that you can use. And it's really cool that they show you the shortcuts in the diagram as well so that you know which is which. I've kept the preset pretty much the same so far. I did add a few more shortcuts here. So if I click this with that, it adds a new layer. And if I click this with this, it copies the layer. Now, as soon as I click on the Photoshop app, you can see from the top here that it will say current preset Photoshop. And this here is called the HUD, and this also has shortcuts. So for example, this would do the brush. This is the eraser, this is the healing tool, and then this is the stamp tool. Got this image on Photoshop, it's from Unsplash. First thing, I wanna crop the image. So this will also change the HUD, so you can see that there's more tools. Click on this one, there's also more tools here. So with just a few buttons and clicks, you pretty much get all of the tools that you could possibly need in Photoshop. This, then crop, use the mouse, maybe crop the image like that. If I click this, and then these two does enter. Now let's say I wanna add a layer just to show you the brush tools. So for a new layer, I've assigned this shortcut and now I can name it, so I'm gonna write brush. Now I wanna paint a few things, so brush, if I wanna change the brush size, I can just use this style, which is like pretty cool because before I used to right click and then change it from here, which is less convenient than if I were to just use the dial and then change it. Say I want to delete or erase these, click here, erase. I really want to assign the camera raw filter because we use it a lot in Photoshop. So I want to assign this button. So to do that, I would just go back into my toolbox controller and then I would find the button that I want to assign, which is this. The camera raw filter is Control Shift and A. So if I click here, press OK, and that's it. So now I have camera raw filter. I want to delete the brush layer and apply it to layer 0. I've assigned this as delete and then I can press this for camera raw filter. If I click once here and then I can use this scroll wheel here to change the exposure, lower it down, change the contrast, change the highlights, which is more convenient than for example doing this. Because if you are just clicking like this, you're not really focusing on the image and seeing the subtle changes that can affect it. The price of this controller is 169 and it is a lot of money to pay for a controller but when you look at the 42 knobs and controllers that you get and how much it saves you time, it is good value for the money. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you are thinking about getting a 2-in-1 laptop and if you are, which laptop are you looking at? 
I will link in the description box this laptop as well as all of the other accessories that I've mentioned. And I will also link in the description box my Fiverr page if you need help with creating a portfolio or maybe you need feedback on your project. There would also be a super peer link where you can book a private call with me if you wanted a one-to-one -one tutorial using any software in the context of your project. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I'm Rosha Shururu and I'll see you next time.